One of the strip's most iconic properties is going away forever. Circus Circus is bringing back the glory days. Two of the best deals in Las Vegas are now gone and the final tourist numbers for 2023 are officially here. So get ready because we've got all that and more coming up in this month's video of Las Vegas news updates and rumors for March 2024. The latest tourist numbers are officially in from the entire year of 2023. An estimated total of 40.83 million people visited Las Vegas last year, which is 2 million more than 2022. The average price for room on the Strip over the course of the entire year of 2023 came in at $204.42, which was 12% higher when compared to the year before. The average price for a room in downtown Las Vegas in 2023 ended up being $105.19, which was 5% higher than the year before. The Strip totaled $8.9 billion in gambling revenue last year, a 7% increase from the year before. Downtown Las Vegas totaled $909.6 million in gambling revenue last year, a 3.3 increase from the prior year. And just in case anyone is really curious, Boulder Highway made $966 million, Laughlin made $511 million, and Mesquite made $184 million in gross gambling revenue for 2023. One of the Strip's most iconic properties will soon be closing forever. The Tropicana Hotel and Casino opened back in 1957, but will close its doors on April 2nd, 2024. Although no official date has been set, the property will be demolished as the site prepares to build a new stadium for the Oakland A's moving to Las Vegas. The Tropicana has over 1,400 rooms and is one of the few strip casinos built in either the 40s or 50s that is still around. No word yet on when the construction will officially begin for the A's stadium, but it is expected to be ready for the 2028 season. Another one of the older iconic strip properties is making a small but big change to its casino. Circus Circus is renovating the slots of fun portion of the casino. This was once a very popular spot for people to easily enter right from the sidewalk to play table games, grab a drink, and have a good time on a budget. But for several years, the place has largely been a ghost town with an abandoned bar, no food options, and only slot machines. The new and improved Slots of Fun will feature a bar, video poker machines, live table games like craps, blackjack, and roulette, as well as more coin slots to give that old school classic Vegas feel to locals and tourists alike. Super Bowl 58 was an absolute thriller in Las Vegas. The Kansas City Chiefs defeated the San Francisco 49ers 25-22 in just the second Super Bowl to ever go into overtime. There was no shortage of NFL personnel who were impressed by Las Vegas' abilities to host such a massive sporting event, including NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell himself, who was quoted in an article stating, The hospitality here, you outdid it, Goodell said. I think it's safe to say that the NFL looks forward to coming back. The earliest the Super Bowl could come back to Las Vegas would be in 2028. The Vegas Valley was full of excitement and activities over the weekend between parties and plenty of sports betting. Traffic in front of the Bellagio was temporarily insane the night before the game, but all in all, the Super Bowl is a massive weekend every year in Las Vegas that consistently provides a great time for all involved. Two of the greatest deals in Las Vegas that we covered in a previous video are now gone. The first one is the credit card at Station Casinos. If you applied for this card at the casino in person and were approved, they would print it out on the spot and you could get a voucher to redeem at the cashier's cage for $50 cash just for getting approved. Another major benefit to this card, in addition to the points you earned, was that you could also status match this to Diamond at Caesars if you were a new player and enjoy six months of no resort fees, separate hotel check-in lounge, and free parking, which brings us to the second great deal that is now gone as well. Caesars Entertainment has officially ended their partnership with Founders Card. This was covered in the same video where you could get Caesars Diamond status every year by paying $495 for the Founders card instead of having to coin in $75,000 on slots or $150,000 on video poker. But don't worry, there's a new status matching deal that you can take advantage of where you get a free $100 dinner credit that we'll cover when we hit that topic. The Palms Hotel and Casino may be designating part of their casino floor to be a non-smoking area. This was discovered while filling out a customer survey for $25 in free play, where one of the questions that was asked was if you would like there to be a non-smoking area on the floor. Palms does have around 2,000 slot machines between the main floor and the high limit area. If you've been to the property before, then you know that the layout of the casino is much longer and rectangular in shape. 
If they do end up designating part of their floor to be non-smoking, we're guessing that it will be the area closer to the entrance of the Palms Place. The Wynn and the Venetian are the latest properties to raise resort fees. MGM recently raised their resort fees across all of their properties in Las Vegas, with Aria, Cosmo, Vidara, and Bellagio being the highest at $50 per night. The Wynn is now charging $50 per night for any room booked on or after January 24th, 2024. It did not take Venetian long afterwards to raise theirs as well. Keep in mind that you still have to pay the room tax of 13.38% on the room price itself and another 13.38% on the price of the resort fee. For the first time ever, the National Rugby League is kicking off its season on U.S. soil. There will not be one, but two matches taking place at Allegiant Stadium on March 2nd. The first at 6.30 p.m. Las Vegas time will be between the Manly Sea Eagles and the South Sydney Rabbitohs. And the 8.30 p.m. match will be between the Sydney Roosters and the Brisbane Broncos. There will be several days of activities that are free to the public to attend leading up to the weekend's festivities. And a quick side note, yours truly was interviewed in a news segment on 10 News First Australia to give the players some advice for how to stay out of potential trouble while they're here in Sin City. Those who work on the strip say there's tricks and traps. The, the safest thing is if any stranger comes up to you and starts talking to you, don't talk to them. That's why your teammates are supposed to be there looking out for you. They're supposed to be there. You're supposed to have a buddy system. All players are being told to stay out of the Sin City sin bin. A man climbed up the MSG sphere the week of the Super Bowl and caused an estimated $100,000 in damage to the newly completed venue. The man refers to himself as the official pro-life Spider-Man and climbed the 367-foot-tall sphere to raise funds for a pregnant woman, according to a post on his social media site. He was arrested. The Fontainebleau Hotel and Casino has announced that they are offering status matching to all current and new card holders. You can now get benefits like a free dining credit, late checkout, and earning bonus points on slots for regular play depending on your status at another casino. But what if you do little to no gambling? Don't worry, this is Rykoman. I put together a short private video that shows you how to get Fontainebleau's silver status to get a free $100 dining credit, 1 p.m. late checkout, and 10% bonus points on slots and video poker. This quick video also shows you how to get Caesars Diamond status for just $95 so that you can never pay resort fees, get a free dinner plus a drink at Bacchanal Buffet, have your own self check-in area at the hotel, free parking at all Caesars properties, and two free tickets to the high roller every single month. If you were to earn all of this by just gambling, you would have to gamble almost $100,000. All you have to do is be on my email list linked in the description below to get early access to this video that will be sent to you one to two days after this update video is published. See you over there. Caesars Entertainment will not be hosting DEF CON this year after it has done so for the previous 20 five years. For those who don't know, DEF CON is a conference for computer hackers. Although Caesars did not give an official reason for the cancellation, most of us can probably take a guess worth about $15 million as to why Caesars would no longer want 30,000 hackers on their properties at one time. The event will still be held in Las Vegas in 2024. However, it's going to take place at the Las Vegas Convention Center and the Sahara Hotel and Casino. A Review Journal article recently revealed that the Clark County Commissioners never signed a contract with Formula One Racing. Commissioner Tick Seegerbloom is quoted saying, It turns out that we never signed a contract that was all with the LVCVA. So everybody keeps saying that we've got three years. We never committed to three years, to my knowledge. Last year, Clark County approved recognizing the Grand Prix as an annual event for at least 10 years, but it didn't contractually guarantee the race will occur each year. One of the more interesting parts of the article is where it states the recognition allows for various ordinances to be waived without additional meetings needed as long as the race is held the weekend before Thanksgiving. Despite being the ones who had to approve the majority of the plans and permitting to allow for the race to occur, commissioners felt like they were the last to know about several important aspects of the race's setup before they were tasked to approve them. The included last minute notifications of pending road work that affected traffic for months in and around the strip. And there is still no answer if the commissioners will give F1 $40 million in public funding that they requested back in June of 2023. The Venetian is making several changes related to its casino operations. They are changing their Players Club program from Grazi Rewards now to Venetian Rewards in March. 
The new program is more transparent than the old program in that it tells you exactly how much you have to coin in while playing slots or video poker in order to reach the next tier level. In addition to changes in the rewards program, the Venetian is relocating and expanding its poker room. The poker room is being moved from the casino floor to the second floor where the Grand Canal shops are and will be expanding from 35 to 50 tables in a 14,000 square foot area. An RJ article quotes, additional amenities in the new space will be incorporated from years of player feedback, the resort said. They include dedicated bathrooms, a self-serve Coca-Cola soda fountain, and coffee, USB and USB-C charging ports at every seat, easy access to online ordering direct to a player's seat, sports betting, and player loyalty kiosks, and more. Some great news out of MGM Resorts properties. They began offering tier matching again to get to either gold or platinum status, but they made it hella hard to get, and the tier match only lasts for 90 days. It is possible to keep your MGM status up to January 31st of 2026. In order to do this, you just need to earn 50,000 tier credits for gold or 150,000 tier credits for platinum within those 90 days of your tier match. When it came to tier matching in the past, being diamond level at Caesars was good enough to match to any casino. However, for this match, you will have to be at least diamond plus with Caesars. The cheapest way we could find to take advantage of this tier match with MGM is to go to any station casino property, coin in a measly $100,000 on slots to earn chairman status, and then match that with gold at MGM. I expect everyone watching to have that completed by next week. The Rio Hotel and Casino continues to make noticeable progress with its renovations under Dreamscape's new ownership. The lights on the outside of the building make the property stand out much more at nighttime. The marquee sign in front of the property along Flamingo Road has also been completed and is displaying advertisements for the property. The All-American Bar and Grill has officially closed for a new concept to take its place. Yours truly has eaten there before and had a great ribeye with mashed potatoes and veggies for $44.99. And speaking of food at the Rio, we got our first taste of food at Attaboy Burger inside of the new Canteen Food Hall. A regular burger is $8, but we got the double for just $11 and added onion rings and fries. The price was $16 and with tax just over $18 and it was well worth it. The burger was juicy, the fries were salted well, and the onion rings were fried just the right amount. A regular burger for $16 near the strip is generally on the cheaper side, but for it to be a double with fries and onion rings is a significantly better value than many other major resorts in the area. After first being announced in December 2021, Emmett Smith's Strip Restaurant is set to open on February 26, taking the place of the old sugar factory at the Fashion Show Mall. The restaurant describes itself as features elevated American favorites and boasts a contemporary menu with refreshing modern dishes, signature favorites like Emmett's favorite butter cake, handcrafted cocktails, and a selection of inspired, bold flavors crafted with fresh ingredients. An indoor amusement park has been approved to be built in Henderson, right near where the old Fiesta Henderson Casino used to be. The city council approved the proposal for a Utah company called Rush Funplex to build it on the four acre site. These complexes are known for having thrilling rides, bowling, laser tag, go-karts, bumper cars, foam pits, and classic arcade games for kids and adults to enjoy. The Rush Funplex could be open as soon as summer 2025. A culinary union strike was recently avoided at several properties in the Vegas Valley. The union reached tentative agreements with Sahara for 650 workers and the Rio for about 670 workers. The culinary union is negotiating a new citywide five-year contract for its members. Back in November, union members closed a deal with MGM Resorts, Caesars Entertainment, and Wynn Resorts, Treasure Island, Circus Circus, The Palms, Mirage, Strat, Westgate, Plaza, Circa, Golden Gate, D, and El Cortez have all reached deals with the union. Officials of the culinary union say this year that they want a historic contract with higher hourly pay, job security from technology, and additional safety measures. We will now rapid fire some more updates from around the Vegas Valley before diving into the rumor section. Green Valley Ranch Casino's new high limit slot room had its grand opening on February 24th. Summerlin South and North Las Vegas are leading the charge when it comes to homes sold so far in 2024 in the Vegas Valley. Our first ever sports bet was a complete loser due to choosing the 49ers to beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. The 7-Eleven in Naked City right behind the Strat has closed. The Strip still has plenty of 6-5 blackjack to destroy your wallet, while Jerry's Nugget remains the undisputed king of $2 roulette and the 30-ounce prime rib for just $44. 
popular breakfast and brunch restaurant Baby Stacks is opening another new location, this time taking the place of the old MTO Cafe on Main Street, just one minute south of the Plaza Casino. No word yet on what will go on the former site of the Fiesta Henderson Casino. The ATM fee at Harris is officially higher than Bellagio's. LOL. The Palm still has their 16 ounce T-bone steak with a baked potato deal for just $19.99. The ACLU of Nevada has officially filed a lawsuit over the new Clark County ordinance in regards to people stopping on pedestrian bridges. The Raiders hired Luke Getze as their offensive coordinator for the 2024 season. Clark County School District Superintendent Jesus Jara submitted his resignation earlier this month. There's no shortage of tourists who gamble at the plaza who would rather play double zero roulette at a $10 minimum than play single zero roulette at a $15 minimum. Bruto Mars' Pinky Ring Lounge is now open at the Bellagio. F1 is facing a potential lawsuit from multiple businesses who suffered millions of dollars in losses during the construction for the inaugural Las Vegas Grand Prix. And Seagull Group bought four downtown real estate properties for $11 million. Whataburger opened its first strip location on February 7th, and the Fountain Blue is opening a museum featuring a curated collection of sports and rare memorabilia from Jim and Fan Gray Tom Brady and the Tom Brady family collection that will open later this year. We will open the rumor section with word. We got that El Cortez Hotel and Casino is planning to expand the casino floor. This will happen by knocking down the wall that separates the casino floor from the Fiesta Room on the east side of the building. The Fiesta Room currently measures 3,200 square feet. Ike's bar will likely have to be moved as part of the renovation. The new space from this project is expected to begin in June or July and will add more slot machine options for guests on the casino floor. Earlier this month, we published a tweet we received from a source in sports betting about Rio being rumored to be giving William Hill the boot from the sports book after March Madness as part of their ongoing renovation under Dreamscape's management. Rio's official Twitter account replied with one of the most witty tweets with just the right amount of attitude negating the rumor and even tagged William Hill, who also gave a funny reply. It's quite possibly the most human interaction we've ever seen from a large casino social media account. It was very well played by both Rio and William Hill. Good work, guys. To get your free dining credit, be sure to get on the email list in the description down below. Thanks for watching. I'm Jacob, and this is My Life in Vegas.